Hi Cordy friends, I thought I'd stop in and do another little video for you. Um, I am working on a memory quilt that I've made for a customer. She sent me two big bags of her two kids' baby clothes. And um, I've finished the first quilt top and I've started quilting it. And there's a couple of fronts of tops that have got really thick painted... Um, motifs I guess um, and so we don't want to stitch over those so what I'm doing on Cumatic is masking so I'm kind of cutting out around that design so it stops there's a lot of stops and starts and then I have to go in and thread all the um, threads in to tidy them up and um, it's a bit of faffing about but um, I think the result is quite nice and I'll go back after when I finish the quilt in free motion quilt in a little bit closer to the motifs but not over them um, so I thought you might be interested in just seeing I'm trying my best here all it is is my phone on a tripod I'm sorry if you can't hear me properly um, I'll do my best um, it's been pouring down with rain here today in um, Northland of New Zealand um, it's kind of eased a bit now to a drizzle, so it shouldn't be too loud from the outside. And hopefully you can hear me inside. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're interested or not, or yeah, I like watching other people's videos, so you might enjoy this. Cool. So, so I've set up, I'll turn the screen around, I'll turn the phone around. I've set up, hopefully you can see there okay. Hi, oh, maybe if I zoom in a tad. So we've got this cool design here, which is called Squiggle Wiggle. And it's, I've set it up as an edge to edge. I've already done, um, I think, four rows. And I'm able to fit two rows within my safe area. I've finished the last lot and I've rolled the quilt and I've realigned my safe area. But now I need to go in and mask some of the bigger motif areas. And so if I just swing you around again, and I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of the quilt. So we've got some of these bigger um, motifs that were the front of t-shirts. The smaller squares, um, I don't know, onesies and t-shirts and plainer ones that I've patched together. And um, see, like, this is a really good example. This is quite heavily painted. And um, if I, I could stitch over it, but it's going to leave quite intense holes from the needle in it. And I could get some skip stitches. Um, each piece of these fabrics has an iron-on interface in behind to help stabilise them because they're all stretchy fabrics apart from the odd one um i can't oh yes here the odd one which is just was like on a pair of shorts and it's just a woven um it's not stretchy it's a cotton so in this guy here this is really thick textured cute little elephant but and again thick paint here so i'm going to mask those areas out um, if I take you back to the screen, um, and what I have to do is activate this, these two rows, turn them red, and then I'm clicking on, oops, I don't think you can see there, on this little, I think it's like, it looks like a little house in a black box. So I'm going to click on that, and that's my mask icon. So I click on that, and then I need to create a region, and I'm going to do that with my sew head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my sew head of the long arm around the area that I want masked, and um, set that. Um, so that it doesn't stitch it and it's it's already um, marked inside region to remove inside or out you can do either well I don't want to do the outside do I do so we're doing the inside you can also have it so that it will stitch it will sew the masked outline but I don't want to do that 
so i'll go over to the sew head and hopefully on the screen you might be able to see some stuff happening so let's just see what happens Just moving around the edge of the first block, which happens to be Spider-Man's head. And I'm just marking that out. Hopefully you can see a line starting to form on the screen. And I've done that first one. So now I will click on preview and you'll see here it's taken it out and you can see the previous row which is gray that's already completed so i've just done the other half of that um part of that motif on that t-shirt so now i'll click the green check mark to say yes i'm delighted with that Okay, and then now I've got to bring me back in so we can see what I'm doing again. I will click on my two rows that are now, essentially they've become one row because I've linked the two together. And it's red again. So now and then I'll go back to my little, looks like a little house in a black box to me. I'll click that and I want to create a region. So head, and then I'll go to the next one and mark out that round the edge. And there we go. Okay, so you can see the uh, the box marked out. So now if I go preview, ta-da, the lines are gone. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I'll click my green check mark and they're all good, but I've still got one more to go. So we'll activate that again, go on my little house in the black box. I want to, I'll show you that. So hang on, I'll do that again so you can see. So I'm red here and I'm going on my little house in the black box, clicking on that. That's the mask feature. And then what I want to do is I want to create a region. So I'll click on that, which is that one there. And then I'm just using my sew head. You can use your screen, but I, I've never done that. I think your sew head's more accurate because you're right there at the court and you can see what's happening. So I click on that. And then I just go back to the sew head and I will show you that so you can see the lines happening. And on the banana pneumatic on the sew head itself, oh, I'll quickly show you. On the sew head itself, you've got it comes up on the screen with this. So you can push that button, but you can also push your toggle on your handlebar, which is kind of cool. So that's what I do. Yeah, so I'll just take you back to the screen. Sorry. My fancy gears here. <laughs> I'll probably give up watching my videos because of it. Line starting there. Mm 
Okay, so that's cool. We're happy with that. And um, let's just have a little preview. Yes, very good. Click the green check mark. Oh, although I've got this really tiny, tiny, I might just, hmm, what should I do there? I'm going to cancel that and do that again because there was a funny little uh, really tiny, tiny sew line that is just a waste of time to do. So, I'll do that again. Okay, let's see what happens now with the preview. Yes, so no silly little line. I had this one tiny, tiny, look like it would be about four, four or five stitches up here. No, it's just a waste of time doing that. So, anyway, the powers of delete. So, we're happy with that. We'll go with that. And now it's going to start in the middle of here, which is weird, because normally you start up over here, and then you would stitch that first row, and then it would come down, and it would go this way. But because of masking, that kind of alters it all around. Um... And probably if I used Art and Stitch, I could change all of that. But I'm not really familiar with that. So for now, I'm sticking to what I know. And this will be fine. And I'm still going to have lots of stops and starts. And I'm still going to have to go back and tie in threads and bury them into um, the quilt. And so um, we'll get started. I'll turn this around and let you see what's happening here. I need to put my foot on my machine, which I haven't done. And the machine head's just moving itself to the start mark. Now let's see if you can see. No! Okay. So I'll move you around. I want you to be able to kind of see what's happening. I might take the camera off in a minute and hold it closer, but I'll just get this started. Getting my bobbin thread up. Let it start. Okay. Just try and take it off the oh it's just done its first little bit and it's stopping so now we will I'll bring you in I'm not sure you're gonna see okay here um, I'm not really sure where to hold you but what I've done now is the pattern has finished its first little bit and I've got to restart it I've got to bring my bobbin thread up. And so if this hadn't have been masked, it would just stitch this all out. There wouldn't be all these stops and starts. It is a lot of faffing about. Start it again, the machine head will move. And it moves like this teeny tiny bit, <laughs> which is kind of oh, crazy. But anyway, never mind. Bring the bobbin thread out. Really, that was like two stitches it made. But anyway. Start again. Hold my thread. Right. And 
I will come back later and tie those threads in. So now I'll just bring you in closer. I'm trying to see what's happening. It's a cool design, not too dense. I don't want to take away from the t-shirt. And I've got a thread called Sterling, which is by Glide. And you'll see here, this is where my start was. My start was here, came to here, then stopped, then I had to move it, and it was like, look how close that was. But anyway, that's just the nature of it. I'm sure with more practice I will get better at doing this, and more um, detailed edge-to-edge, -edge, more dense edge-to-edge -edge would be worse. There would be so many more stops and starts. Yeah going to be cool. So yeah, it started in a funny spot. Here's my backing, which is the same fabric as the sashing fabric. And um, I'm just going to come to the end there in a minute. And then I'm guessing, actually I'm not sure where it's going to go next, so <laughs> we're in this together, it'll be a mystery. Let's see where it goes. Where is it going to go? Let's take to the screen. See, it's on the very edge of the quilt. So I think it's going to go back up to that first row. Yes. Okay. So that's where it's gone up there. So who watching has a long arm machine? I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to um, to know if you have a long arm machine. What long arm machine do you have? Do you have a Benina q -matic or do you have a different long arm machine? Are you hand guided? Do you quilt on your domestic machine? Um, do you have no idea what I'm talking about? I mean, you're just watching this video because it came up on your feed. I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Okay, so... Um, yeah, let me know in your comments. It'd be interesting. I will keep the video going for a bit longer and sort these threads out. To bring up my bobbin thread. Again, another tiny, tiny bit. Never mind. What's the saying? Rome wasn't built in a day. Quilts aren't always made in a day. <laughs> Go back soon and tie in some threads when I know that the machine's safely out of the way of my hands. And, um, and then what I'll do, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do in those blocks that I've masked out. I will definitely go back and do some more quilting but not over the motif. So um, yeah, if you follow along on my blog, Facebook and or Instagram, um, I will be putting photos up when I've finished the quilts. Um, I'm just under the same name, Quilt Me Kiwi, as I am on YouTube here. So um, I don't know how much more you want to watch. This is probably enough. I think you kind of get the idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I've had a few more followers recently. I thank you. Um, I really enjoy watching YouTube videos, particularly when I'm doing my own sewing. I like to put either a quilting video up or 
um, someone's demonstration of how to make a quilt. Um, it's just kind of like a little bit of company. Um, in my business, it can be a little bit lonely. You're working here by yourself. Um, I do an awful lot of staff meetings where I'm nattering away to myself because I'm the only staff member. <laughs> yeah, such is life, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, um, thank you for joining me and um, leave a comment or something and I hope it's not, I couldn't hear you, which I apologise again. I'm sorry if you haven't been able to hear me. Take care. Happy Quilty Days.